billahi min shaitan ar-rajeem, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukal ajeezu ta'eefu, miskeenu, zalim, jihad <coughs> and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, alhamdulillah. InshaAllah Allah dress us from the immense light of Imam Zainullah Abideen and immense realities and knowledges from the heart of Ahlul Bayt and from the heart of the Holy Companion and that their love and their ishq to dress us and their good character to dress us, their knowledges to dress us, our families and our communities. By means of that character and those realities that Allah uplifts the servant. And we talked last night and all, all the talks and people trying to understand how to capture these realities, how to expand upon these realities and a reminder for myself always is that it's not about reading the reality but it's about downloading the reality as an analogy. Means that when we hear something or uh, we're skimming through it as if reading an article and if we take a life in which to download the article it is a eternally burned upon the heart. And that which you download into your system enters the heart, that which you try to capture through reading and, and uh, superficial knowledge only goes to the level of the head. And that's a dangerous place for the knowledges to go to the head because in the head is where shaitan is where the person's mind is playing tricks on them. Shaitan occupies the mind and, and balances everything and says, no I don't think, you know, you know, doubt, shak and every type of mischief comes from that head. Our life is a battle against the head, La ilaha illallah that for heavenly realities Ya Rabbi to teach me how to use my heart, open my heart. I hear a talk, then we go at night, we listen to the talk. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And then even you can sit by yourself and close your eyes, meditate and connect with the talk. That as the talk is taking place you already took your notes, you already listened to it in a different way. Then you go back and you meditate upon that reality and then you breathe and concentrate on how to open the heart for further understanding and further realities and this is for every talk. And when the student advances at every moment they're in their tafakkur, they're continuously connecting their heart, feel their heart connected and immediately as the talks begin the energies are flowing into the hearts and a download is occurring. And in this download state what's spoken is much smaller than the file that's coming. So it means that there's not enough time to speak it. So it's the immensity of the file and the download that takes so many days of contemplation. And when people are not contemplating means they only took the superficial understanding and busy life, busy world, they put it into their head 
it gets jargled with other understandings and then off to the next subject, next subject, next subject. But the head has mixed everything up like a confusing soup, just mixed with everything. And the way is not based on that, the way is based on the heart and the heart has the infinite capacity and requires this upload and download. So this, this is an immense, it's hard to put into words that our system is in continuous need of downloads and updates. And every time we meditate and contemplate every talk that's coming is an update. So it's like just reading about the update, oh these are all the new things that are going to come onto this phone, okay, okay. But then you never really update the file, you've read about all the updates and the potential of what the phone can do. But the talks are literally downloads. So when they come you listen, then you meditate a little bit at night contemplating, fajr time comes that asking the heart to be complete, the Ya Rabbi complete the download into my heart. And when we say, Ya Rabbi then there must be a deep reality that has been discussed. Means by the one whom governs me and his authority over me that send these knowledges and realities into my heart. And the one that doesn't know his authority then yet not truly guided. And that's why the whole purpose of tafakkur, contemplation and other people are not there yet that's why they said it's not that important. But the student unless they understand the authority that is over them and who is their authority then nothing truly opens, they're still just in the playing phase of life. Which is okay, it has its barakah but it's not a, a phase in which to progress. And that's why Allah throughout Qur'an is, is giving us these isharats and guidance, Bismi Rabbik that in, in which name and, and what name are you asking and through what authority are you asking. When we see everything in our life around us is a sign that you can't get into your phone without authority. You can't get into your wallet without an authority, with what authority? Now they want double authorization that you have to authorize from this method and then you have to authorize from another method just to verify who you are. Shouldn't this be a sign for a believer <coughs> that for dunya I have to authorize myself everywhere. Pretty soon you won't be able to buy and trade without that authorization, their money will be locked and encrypted. So then what from the heavens when Allah is, is teaching to us? Do you think that you just get into places without authorization? And in what name are you authorized and, act and asking for access to these realities? So means the dunya shows us the magnitude of what is in the spiritual realm. But unfortunately when you teach people the spiritual realm they, they don't really believe until something from dunya comes to them and that was the question last night. What about like the AI and what about oh this device where now they can read and send messages into your brain. People are hearing through a device out of Harvard and many other companies have the device. They park outside your house and you hear whispers and talkings in your brain like, go do this, go do this, go harm yourself. Then they're asked, Shaykh, is, is there such an equipment? Well, 1500 years Prophet is telling us about waswas, why would you need to need, need to know proof of it, equipment? But you see how the faculty of faith works. When we say waswas we're not really, really sure until Allah lets you to be attacked by a jinn and then you say, why I got attacked if I'm in tariqah? Well isn't that your training? Isn't that giving you certainty? Because everything we tell you, you don't seem to believe until you see it come out by Toshiba or San, uh, Sony or, or some sort of Japanese uh, uh, technology firm. If they make a device they say they can talk into your head, well 1500 years ago Prophet described a word called waswas. And then we have a protection from waswas in the Surah of Qur'an. So means that 
Of course this is under the faculty of the jinn that anything talking to you is under their authority. Whether it's a machine, whether it's just in thin air, whether it's in your sleep. So then we're entering the realms now where faith was one thing that we believed in and now people are seeing that these issues physically begin to manifest. Why? Because they want to be known. They don't want to serve humans anymore just to, to take their faith, you know they've served enough in which humans no longer believe in God, they believe in their technology which is them. But now they're prepared for in, in servanthood or what is the word for enslaving? Not servanthood but in servitude is when they want to put humanity as their slaves. So like a junkie they came and gave people from these technologies to enslave them and then they will begin to manage them, right? Well you think it's AI but it's the jinn who's sick and tired of listening to what you suggest for your phone, what you suggest to eat, what you suggest to do and he will tell you what you should eat tonight what you should do tonight, where your money will go, in what accounts it will go. And they said, this is amazing, this AI it, writes, it runs everything. Yes that was his intention was to rule humanity and that becomes their way of thinking, oh this is just technology. He said, no this is what Prophet brought for everybody, that these jinn are going to become the Lord and Saviour of people. And Allah described, don't take these jinns as your lords and saviors, your lords, your rabb, why? Because don't let them to be an authority over you and make their authority to become divine over you. That you, you swear by, oh this, this is amazing, they do everything, it does everything this technology. And this is the enslavement of mankind and the system for dajjal who is of a jinn nature but won't show himself in that reality. So we have it all, Prophet wrote everything for us. And if we train with energy and talk with energy and talk in a language that's similar to their language we can decipher and decode what they're doing. But when you talk in a language that makes no sense to their sciences then people seem to think that they're two different realities when in fact they're just one. So it means the jinn come, those are portals, they take people, they move people, they move items, issues, voices, images, everything. They say, no, no this is a, this is a phone, this is a mobile phone, this is a video call. No, no this was the jinn that they take your image and your sound, they duplicate that voice and send it. And this is all their reality and that's why then on this subject of who governs you that, that was the importance of Rabb that in, in reference to worshipness is only Allah But Allah wants us to clearly define the authority. That what is the authority over ourselves in the physical world, what is the authority over ourselves in our spiritual world and then how to use that authority for our ascension within the heavens. And the Ahlul Bayt are masters of immense realities and knowledges and that we pray on these holy nights they illuminate our hearts with the immensity of their realities and their ability to take deep, deep heavenly realities and bring it for us in a language that is of benefit to our humanity. Because if they could only cover, traverse or, or convey a knowledge that we could not equate into our everyday life then it would be difficult. But to take very deep realities and the ability to bring it now into our physical plane on this earth right now, what are we in need of? 
but we're in need of finding out energy. So anyone who doesn't believe that, watch alternative news sources where they say now they have even a directed energy weapon in which they can weaponize energy and they show areas that catch on fire for no reason, there was no fire around. And they show a laser comes down and immediately begins something of a fire and something's happening. And they have, they said all these world powers have this technology. So it means we've said many times that Dajjal would be using energy, that they're going to fight with energy, they're going to destroy with energy, they're going to use every understanding possible because in the last days everything is sound. The final state is to return back to the state of sound and the importance of sound. The one who understands energy and understands sound and the one whom trained in energy and trained in sound, then this becomes essential for their existence. Fighting off negative energy is a training from Allah that keeping your wudu, keeping your practices strong in your madad, strong in the madad of the shaykhs and every wazifa and awrad that is given to you, how to call upon spiritual entities for a protection, for an energy and how to be, build the shield of your energy. If something is attacking you, your madad has to become stronger in which it can't attack you because you've left yourself and you brought the madad of the shaykh through you. If still not the shaykh with you then you're being attacked. This has to be sort of trained and understood. <coughs> that was the first concept of the madad. That you, you make your connection that I'm nothing, I'm nothing and that your fires, your energy is with me and I cease to exist. Now how can you be attacked at that state? Because their energy coming, their energy comes with all their madad and all of their energies with them and it pushes back any type of attack, any type of difficulty. This is then the training phase in which the student has to train with their energy, train with their energy, train with their connection and to live in that connection. They're in wudu at all times, they keep their connection at all times. And as their heart is connected then these knowledges are being downloaded. They're not people who read only file, it's not a read only file, they're not interested in read only files. They're only interested in the files that can be downloaded into their heart. So it means their whole system is based on bringing that reality into the heart. And when it comes into the heart it's not to be understood by the head in which the head negates, now it can't possibly be that. No, my responsibility is to bring it into my heart and later to ponder its depth of its reality and then make that knowledge to blossom. But if you try to understand through your head you say, oh no it's like, it's like and your head starts to guide the information and tamper with the information. So it's a very deep process of the heart and this has to do with energies and all that's happening on this dunya right now. And that because we teach this reality and this way of reality. Then people are astonished when they watch the videos, oh this is shaykh is talking about all the things that we're seeing in the news, while others are pretending like they're still on, uh, on uh, uh, in the desert somewhere. That this is now very real, what they thought was futuristic, no, no it's, it's very real, very now and these are events that are taking place. And the duty of the shaykhs is to guide people and prepare them to bring their energy out, to, to bring their realities out and, and to, to live a life of preparedness inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa and bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. 
InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.